Well, welcome to The Secrets of Their Power. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we're going to look at Evan Roberts. He was a powerful man. And I just want to start out by stating this, that the secret of the power, of course, is the Holy Spirit. But what we're looking at, what we're trying to understand, is what did Evan Roberts do uh, to enable the Holy Spirit to work so powerfully through him? He would, of course, birth the great Welsh Revival in 1904 and 1905 that saw over 100,000 people come to Lord. That revival helped spark revivals around the world. Many people were inspired by what this man did. He was truly a powerful vessel for the Lord. Yet, when people talked about him, many people would state that he was not a natural leader. He was not a great orator. He was not the person that you and I would have picked out to lead a revival in any way, shape, or form. So how did he do it? Someone said he was not like John Wesley or George Whitfield. So this man was a very young man, simply decided to follow the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot that we can learn from him because we need a fresh awakening revival in this hour. If God is no respecter of persons and the same Holy Spirit is available to us today, if we will follow his example and learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit and walk by faith and in obedience, we too can see a revival in our generation. Evan Roberts was a man that looked back. He saw what God did in a previous generation. There was an awakening in Wales uh, just before and during the time when George Whitfield visited Wales and in the 1859 revival that started, of course, in Ulster. That revival saw over 100,000 people come to the Lord. And that might have been where George, or Evan Roberts got this burden to see 100,000 people come to the Lord. We look at this man and he also looked at George Bueller and learned how to take hold of precious promises from the Word and hold fast and by prayer and faith see those promises brought forth on the earth. We know from the Word that we're to pray that kingdom come, thy will be done. By taking precious promises and standing them and trusting that God is a God of covenant that can and will not fail His Word. So as we look at Evan Roberts, he was told that if they prayed and waited in a prayerful, prayerful spirit, sometime the Holy Spirit would come to them. And so he started to wait and keep praying and waiting and seeking after the Holy Spirit. Now the word is very clear that God will always fill the thirsty and meet those that are hungry. And he became hungry and desperate for the Holy Ghost. He said that prayer became substance to him. It meant more than food to him. And this was a good, a weakness, or sorry, strength and a weakness because later on, Evan Roberts would be so dedicated to the ministry that he would neglect to feed his body and give it rest. This would ultimately lead to his downfall. We must be very careful that we use wisdom, that while we don't allow our priorities to be consumed by food and rest, but by doing the will of God, but at the same time, we need to be good stewards of our bodies and give it proper rest and food. Now, as Evan Roberts hungered after the Lord, he was disturbed. There came a point where all of a sudden he said he received a baptism in the Holy Spirit. He would then wait upon the Lord and he was so frustrated by what he saw going on in the church. This was a man that gave himself to so much prayer that one of his landlords kicked him out because of the noise he made in his continual seeking and praying out loud for God. How many of us have been, you know, kicked out of somewhere because we pray too loud? Evan Roberts was known that he'd be walking down the street and all of a sudden he'd be caught up in a trance praying and seeking the Lord. During his time in ministry or Bible school in the dorm, the other students talked about how during the night he would just be groaning and crying out to the Lord, but they were too frightened to ask him what was going on. Well, as I said, one night Evan Roberts was praying and all of a sudden he was caught up to heaven and sat and communed with the Lord for four or five hours. He would be changed by this experience that went on for quite some time. He was asked, was it a dream? And he said, no, I was wide awake. 
Evan Roberts would have visions. For example, when he was at the Bible college, he had a vision where he sees himself in his home church preaching. And the Lord calling him, telling him to go. And only finally when he says, okay, I will go, did the vision end. So he had a great intimacy with the Lord. That was key to his ministry. We got to be careful, of course, we don't get weird, but at the same time, we stay within the confines of the word and we have an intimacy with the Lord. We build ourselves on a strong prayer life built around the word. So Evan Roberts um, saw in his spirit, saw in his heart something from heaven. And he said, many who are now silent Christians, negative Christians, Christians whose beliefs may be little to them and nothing to anyone else, will lead the movement. He began to see what God was going to do. Instead of looking with his natural eyes now, being discouraged by what he saw, he became more convinced by what heaven was saying. He said the world was swept by his spirit as by a rushing mighty wind. We need to learn to stop looking based on the natural and being discouraged as we see a church that's lost the fire. He said, I beseech all those who confess Christ to ask today upon their knees if he has not some work for them to do now. He was a person that disturbed you because he felt that if we truly confess Jesus, there was a purpose for us to fulfill, and we do. We have a call that we must step up and we must fulfill in this hour. So as we humble ourselves before the Lord, let us seek, God, what do you desire for me to do? Someone said, I do not hesitate to say that God has set his hand upon this lad, beautifully in simplicity, ordained him in his devotion, lacking all the qualities that we have looked for in preachers, prophets, and leaders. He didn't have it from a natural perspective. But God saw in this man a heart and his devotion and in his pressing in. It wasn't a one-off. But through a long season and hungering after God that started when he was 13, he started to spend late at night just dreaming of thinking of revival. It disturbed him so much he went after it with everything he got. And he became committed to prayer because the burden on the inside of him grew. He lived on gropingly, hoping, praying, believing that someday he would come into the full realization of what was to him the one important thing in his life, complete communion with God. How much do we want an intimate relationship with the Lord? How much are we willing to press in and pray and seek and go after it? Are we more interested in being entertained? Are we more interested in just living life? What is the driving force in us? Roberts talks chiefly of God's love and the real joy of living in obedience to that love. It wasn't a slavery to him, but it was such an awe because he discovered a love that wrecked him. As he spent time in the presence of God, he said he was changed by it. It wrecked this man, and now he saw people through that love. We need to see people through the love of the Lord. We need to be wrecked by it in the secret place until it changes us so that we go forth with that same love, now seeing through the vision of heaven. He said this, For a long time I was much troubled in my soul and my heart by thinking over the failure of Christianity. Oh, it seems such a failure, such a failure. And I prayed and I prayed, but nothing seemed to give me any relief. But one night, after I'd been in great distress praying about this, after being in great distress praying for this, I went to sleep. And about one o'clock in the morning, I was suddenly waked up out of my sleep. And I found myself with unspeakable joy and awe in the very presence of the Almighty God. And for the space of four hours, I was privileged to speak face to face to Him as a man speaks face to face with a friend. At five o'clock, it seemed to me as if I returned to earth again. He said, oh, what a wonderful communion with God. I cannot describe it. I felt it, and it seemed to change all of my nature. I saw things in a different light, and I knew that God was going to work in the land. Because when he got and spent the time with the Lord, now he saw things through the perspective of heaven. And when we come to a place where God can trust us, he begins to reveal to us his plans and his purposes, his secrets. And he understood this. Um, 
This is my earnest faith. If the churches but will learn the greatest lessons of obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, obedience, obedience, obedience. When we look at his revival services, it broke the mold because we're so used to a service following a certain program. So many worship songs and offering a message. But Evan Roberts broke that. They would allow the spontaneity of the Holy Ghost, where the Spirit of God became Lord, and he wanted to teach them how to simply listen and obey. Evan Roberts didn't bring some heavy um, personality in his preaching, but rather he brought this boyish laughter and simplicity that caught the people because he was real. He would walk down the aisles and he would lay hold of people. He would grab them. He would kneel beside them and pray, and people recognized he was real. He was broken and burdened for individuals. It wasn't about the numbers. It was about each individual. And as the Holy Ghost led, he just simply followed. They would pray. And then he would begin to preach a few words, and then all of a sudden they would pray or they would sing, sometimes in Welsh, sometimes in English, and sometimes a mixture. The songs were not declared But the people somehow, by the Spirit, would spontaneously begin singing the same song and praying. And then they would go quiet. Evan Roberts would fall to his knees and stay quiet for prolonged periods of time, maybe an hour, until the Holy Ghost suddenly moved and lives were suddenly utterly changed. Not alone were Christians brought back, but unbelievers were wrecked, changed. Crime dropped. Prisons were emptied. Mockers fell to their knees. The hardened of heart suddenly were cracked open before God, wrecked by the love. Things that we desire and we may try in and of our own ability to do, suddenly done with great ease by the Holy Spirit. As he simply learned and he kept teaching them to simply hear and obey the Spirit. He had to personally learn and walk it out. He had to get to know and spend time learning friendship and a relationship with the Lord God so that as he began to walk, he was walking out and revealing him whom he knew. And that was the thing he preached. He wanted people to come and experience the Jesus that he met. Not a Jesus based on doctrine or deed or denomination, but Jesus, he said. We can only preach with an anointing that which we know. As we spend time in the secret place getting to know Jesus and allowing the Holy Ghost to open the Word, all of a sudden we bring a real Jesus with real answers to real problems. And we get out of the way and allow the Holy Ghost to so anoint something and to so move as to change lives, to bring a Word that has got the Holy Spirit of power on it. They said strong men are in tears of penitence. Women are shaken with new fervor. And in the street, small children at their play are humming revival hymns. Everywhere you went, people were talking about the revival. It changed everything. He said, I do not wish to move men temporarily. I want to convince them permanently. But the Spirit will guide me. He understood that you can bring an inspirational message that gives them a sugar high, makes them feel good for a moment. Or by the Spirit of the living God, you can say words of power that we don't comprehend sometimes simple statements. But they carry the anointing of the Holy Ghost and they go in and like a seed bring forth change that is permanent and lasting for eternity. He is the mouthpiece of the fact that there's no human guidance as to man or organization. No organization dominated or controlled this move. It was something of the Spirit of God, and it just flowed, changing people as it went. His tone is conversational. His eyes are friendly. He begins to pace up and down, turning the people with short, rapid phrases and insinuating them with tense, earnest gestures, as short as jerky as his speech. He simply came, and it was real. He simply walked among them and reached them. As if Jesus, we see if what would Jesus do today? As we look at Evan Roberts, 
It starts with a life built on the Word, where the Word means it comes to be final authority. And you look and remember what God's done in a previous generation, and it provokes faith in you. I encourage and I disturb you to go check out some of my revivals in previous generations and see what God has done and how revival truly is a divine assault on society. And that today we look and what seems impossible, but the move of the Spirit can change everything. And it starts when we, the church, get back and humble ourselves and seek His face and pray. And it may take a season of praying until pray, we pray till we get into that place of prayer where we're in communion with God and we wait in His presence and we are first changed. Only when we are changed we go forth anointed with God, glowing, filled with the joy. People don't need religion, they need a real Jesus. Coming forth with the joy which He did in simplicity allowing the Holy Ghost to break our molds and the Holy Ghost to be Lord in our services. If we want revival, we must allow the Holy Ghost to be Lord over our services. Allow the Holy Spirit to just move as He, as he desires. Because every time He turns up, He will always reveal Jesus. He will magnify, glorify Jesus. Evan Roberts did not seek money or fame or building up of His name. But rather, in everything he did, he always sought to glorify Jesus. He made mistakes. He was young. He could have taken better care of his body. But he was still a powerful vessel that moved by the Spirit, changed a nation. He will go down in the hall of fame of faith people, of great leaders, history makers before God that did something beyond their natural ability. We've been called for such a time as this, and God desires to move again. He's looking for more Evan Roberts. Because those who come and simply obey, He anoints, and those He anoints, He appoints, and those He appoints, He releases the resources to accomplish that purpose. Evan Roberts was anointed and appointed to birth a revival. And as a consequence, every time he stepped up to the pulpit, every time he would step up and begin to speak, he could speak simple words, even at his father's funeral. And revival started to come forth. His simple words stirred the hearts of people because of the Holy Ghost. He got what he desired. What disturbed him on the inside for so long, he got. See, God is faithful. If you knock and keep knocking, ask and keep asking, so what's in your heart? What disturbs you? What is your greatest desire? Do you burn desire to see God revealed in this hour with a mighty revival? Are you going after the Lord when no one sees in the secret place? In the midnight hour when there's nobody there to watch or see? Are you going after God and crying out with everything you've got, standing in a gap for a generation that outwardly doesn't deserve it? But you lay hold of the heartbeat and compassion of heaven, and it changes you, wrecks you. I ask you. The same Holy Spirit is available to us today. Will we come and in simple faith obey and choose to listen to the Holy Spirit? Amen.